Welcome back to Curve Lab. Today's video is going to be part one of a series where I design and build a completely 3D printable RC car chassis, or I should say nearly completely 3D printable. Today's video is going to be covering just the first step of that process and engineering the low hanging fruit, so to speak, and building the very first prototype and then testing the prototype to see which of the parts fail and how I can improve them. So I know what I need to improve on for the next version. If you're familiar with this channel, you know previously I've built 3D printable bodies that require purchasing an off-the-shelf existing RC car chassis. The dream here is to engineer a brand new chassis that is completely 3D printable and that is compatible with the Curve Lab bodies. So if you get a Curve Lab body, you don't have to buy a chassis online. You can just download one and print it alongside the body. A big shout out to Bamboo Lab who sent me their newly released H2S that I used in this video. I've talked about in my other videos how much I like Bamboo Lab, but now that I have a larger print bed, this 340 by 340 millimeter print bed, I can print every part of this chassis on a single build plate, and I don't have to break up the main chassis plate and glue it together afterwards. So this larger build plate is perfect for building RC cars. The other amazing thing is with the AMS2, your filament is getting automatically dehumidified and dried. And I noticed this printer is even quieter than my X1C, so I'm really thrilled about that because I use this thing in a small studio space and often run prints while trying to sleep next door. So if you're in the market for a new printer, a great way to support this channel would be to buy it using the link in the description of this video. So back in December, I got a hold of one of these HPI WR8 Imprezas and it's been one of my favorite chassis to drive. Hauls ass, goes 40 miles an hour, but can also do donuts. It can drive on dirt and asphalt and snow. And so I figured this would be a perfect chassis to sort of use as a template while I design my own 3D printable chassis. In the end, every single part's gonna get completely redesigned. It's not gonna bear any resemblance to this chassis, but I find it's really helpful to just have a, a starting point to work from and to sort of understand all the components that make this chassis so fun to drive. So as a baseline, I got the whole chassis built in CAD, and I started looking at the really low-hanging fruit or the parts that would be easy to redesign to be 3D printable. So I started with the main chassis plate, and since it's gonna be 3D printed, it needed to be thickened quite a bit to be more structurally rigid. I also added these upward turned flanges that add strength to it just like an I-beam and it passed the poke test. And I built in posts directly into the chassis plate that mounts the servo with four screws. And I haven't sourced the exact motor that I'm gonna use yet, so I built sort of a placeholder motor mount and integrated it into the base plate since there's no reason you should have to attach it as a secondary part since the whole thing can be grown as a 3D print. Similarly, we gotta create a really beefy and stiff control arm that can be 3D printed. So I designed features like these teardrop shaped holes it can be printed without the use of support, since the overhangs have a maximum of 45 degrees. This part also needs to leave clearance for the knuckle to articulate through the whole range of suspension travel. The same philosophy as the teardrops applies to designing the knuckle. So I tilted the whole part to print on the plane shown and design these features where bearings are pressed in such that none of the faces exceed that 45 degree overhang. So the part prints super easily and functions perfectly. One of the most common parts we see in RC cars are these ball and cup links. Here it's being used as the upper member of this four bar linkage. Normally you have to press the ball into the cup and it uses the elastic deformation of the plastic to pop into place. But 3D printing affords us some really cool cheat codes that can't be achieved using normal manufacturing means. We can just print the ball in place. After a couple iterations, I got the exact spacing between the ball and the cup right so that as you pop it off the build plate, the pink ball remains captured and spins freely within the green cup. The steering linkage posts were substantially thickened and combined into the chassis plate to make sure they're really sturdy given that they're 3D printed parts instead of steel or injection molded plastic like most RC cars. Another component that I was really keen to test were the wheels. I wanted to make sure that they're strong enough as 3D printed parts. One challenge is just designing the thing to be printable without support, so I tried this method of splitting the wheel into two parts, the green inner hub and the orange outer hubcap. This means you can print them as separate parts really quickly and easily, and they peel right off the build plate and can be glued up into a solid single piece. This method seemed to work really well, and I printed the wheels in PETG, and they feel pretty much as strong as the actual injection molded wheels. 
printed all the other parts in PETG as well because it's a bit stronger than PLA but is really forgiving and easy to print as well. I designed all the parts to be more substantial so that I think they'd be strong enough just sort of based off of intuition but I'm really curious to, to test them all out and see what parts, if any, fail and need to be redesigned to be stronger or stiffer. So one challenge is gonna be redesigning the drivetrain. I've seen enough 3D printable gear videos on YouTube that I can accept that spur gears are not gonna be the best option. There's just too much wear and tear for plastic gears that are 3D printed to work long term. And I, I really wanna design this chassis to be robust and to last just as long as an off the shelf chassis. And even to perform better than an off the shelf chassis in many regards. So I'm definitely gonna implement a different drivetrain than a plastic spur gear drive. But right now I just wanna test all the low hanging fruit to make sure it's robust enough to sustain the wear and tear of driving before I launch into redesigning the whole drivetrain. But this brings me to my next point and really to the core of why I'm taking on this project. I think 3D printing technology has reached a point where printable chassis can be way better than buying off the shelf ones because RC cars should be meant to be driven and meant to be crashed. And right now, RC car companies provide replacement parts at a ridiculous markup. With 3D printable chassis, you can basically just buy the files one time and then have an infinite number of replacement parts for free because you can crash it, break it, reprint, and replace all the parts. So I see 3D printable chassis as being way better than mass manufactured ones. It's like buying a lifetime subscription to a chassis. Some parts are never gonna make sense to be 3D printed. Take for example, screws, washers, pins, ball bearings, things of this nature, but the way I'm thinking about this is those parts can be sourced online from suppliers that aren't related to RC cars and therefore don't come with the huge markup. So these kind of parts you'll see I left in their original form and not 3D printed for this build. One exception to this is the shocks, which are designed for RC cars. There are materials inherent to shocks that can't really be redesigned to be 3D printed. The spring steel and the oil damping is critical to the function of a good set of shocks. So I anticipate that these are gonna remain as off-the-shelf components for this 3D printed build. But aside from that and a couple other exceptions, this whole chassis can be 3D printed. So here, I'm gonna do the first full prototype assembly.
So here's the first rev of the first prototype finished, so I'm ready to take it out and test drive it until something fails. I designed and 3D printed a camera mount so that I could attach my iPhone and film the chassis in motion to see what I could do. I drove it for about 20 minutes, and to my surprise, there was absolutely no showstoppers or glaring issues. It really handled much like the original. I didn't push it all the way to top speed just because I didn't have quite as much open area as I'd like to do that, but I did about 60 to 80% speed pushes and took some hard corners to see how the suspension would react. Everything looked beautiful from my perspective. So the only issue that I noticed was after taking slow-mo video and watching the footage, you can see quite a bit of chattering in each of the front wheels. Especially when I cut traction or took a hard corner. You can see the chattering sort of ripple through the wheels, almost like there's a little bit too much slop or tolerance in the steering. I took a closer look to try and diagnose the issue. So after some poking and prodding, I isolated the issue to be too much tolerance in the bearings that press into the knuckle. Any extra wiggle room translates to multiple degrees of freedom of the wheel axle, which is not great for responsive steering and wheel chatter. So I think the solution is going to be a simple one, which is just tighten up that tolerance for the next rev. Thanks for watching, and in the next part of this series, I'm going to be evaluating a belt drive system, including belt drive differentials that I designed from scratch. So stay tuned for the next video.